Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to teach you how to work with structures. So last episode we gave a brief overview of what structures are, or data structures are, and then also abstract data types. They're pretty much the same thing. So in this episode we're going to look at one of those abstract data types um, or data structures and learn how to use it so that we can basically have a grouping of values to create a custom data type within the C++ program. So C++ offers a bunch of different uh, data structures that we can use that are built, in, built into the language. Um, like, for example, the one we're about to work with right now is called a structure. But then also we have um, objects and classes. So I'll just say classes. Then we have enumerations. And we have some other stuff like um, data structures as in arrays, vectors. Those are some of the other data structures. But in terms of making custom data types, these are like the ones you would use pretty much for that, okay? So the first one we're gonna look at is a, is a regular structure. And let's just jump right into it. How do we create a structure? Which is, you can think of it as a custom data type. Well, to make a structure, you just gotta put struct, and that stands for structure, obviously. So after you put that, now you just need to make up a name for your data type. So let's say that we want to represent an address in our C++ program. So we'll call this address. So what we need to do now is to find what an address is, what properties does an address have, okay? So what we need to do to do that is give it some uh, some variables inside of it, right? So we'll give it. So let's think about what does an address have. Well, an address has the first like the street address. So like um, one seven eight one seven Coit Road. You know, um, that's a street address. So string uh, street address address. There we go. So we're just defining a simple variable that is going to basically live inside of our custom data type. And again, our custom data type here, or our structure, is going to be uh, basically a grouping of different variables into one variable, basically, or data type. It'll, you'll get more uh, experience with this. So let's see, um, what else does a address have? It has a city, so string city. And then if a string state, if you're in uh, the United States, of course. And then a, let's think about one more thing. We need a zip code, right? So integer zip code. All right, so now we have created the four variables that are gonna be a part of our custom address data type or structure. Um, by the way, these are also called members. These are called members. All right, and you'll see more of that terminology once we move on to classes and objects. So these are called member variables or just members. All right, and so now that we have defined what an address is, we can then create different variables of the data type address, right? So let's do that. Let's make a simple uh, address data type. So let's represent my home, right? So address home. And so now that we have created a home uh, variable of the type address, we need to give it some values, right? So currently we, we know that the address has these four values inside of it, these four variables, street address, city, state, and zip code. But since we have not given them any initial values, they're empty, right? So how do we access those values, um, those variables inside of our address here to give them initial values? So we can do that using the dot operator. So home dot, and then now we can see that if we look closely, I know it's a little small because um, my screen is pretty big. I can't zoom in right now, um, but uh, you can see it says city, city, state, street address, and zip code. So um, let's say that we want to set the street address. So we'll do home dot street address, and now we can then set it. So home dot street address is equal to, and it wants a string, right? Because we set it to a string. So we'll give it a string of whatever my street address would be. So we'll say 600 CO road 252. And then now let's set the city. So how do we access the city? So we're gonna do home dot city is equal to Gustine. And then now we need the state. State is equal to Texas, TX. And then finally we need the zip code. So home dot zip code is equal to 764. Five, five, okay, so essentially just don't get like overwhelmed here Well, all we're doing is really just making a variable of the type address and inside of that custom data type that we have created We have other variables inside of it So what we're doing here is accessing our variable and then getting the variables inside of that custom variable right because a structure or a custom data type at the end of the day is uh, Or a data structure at the end of the day is really just a grouping of variables into one custom variable base or data type right anyway, so and now that we have defined um, a home, what a home is, and we have created a home, or an address, excuse me, now that we have defined what an address is, and we have created an address that represents my home, we can then access the members of this address, give them initial values, 
all right? And the same way, we can also print out these values or access them without setting them. We don't have to set them. We can also just access them um, like in a regular way. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say we want to print out our home address, right? So let's try doing that. So we'll say, uh, see out my home address. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell you. By the way, um, as you can see, I have switched to Visual Studio again. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is no particular reason except that Visual Studio is, um, I think it's much older and it's been around for a longer time and it's more popular. So it has a little more features than C-Lion does. But um, C-Lion does have some pretty nice features. So you can actually get this thing. So um, C-Lion offers a product called the ReSharper Ultimate, which is basically a bunch of little plugins that, that basically take the features of C-Lion um, and put them into Visual Studio as a plugin automatically. So if you have, if, let's say you're a college student, if you have a .edu email, you can register with JetBrains and then get access to all of their products like C-Lion, IntelliJ for Java, ReSharper Ultimate, which hooks into Visual Studio, WebStorm, and all of the products. So I would, I would recommend you check that out if you want to, okay? So that's just what I'm using now. I may switch back to C-Lion at some point, but for now we're going to stick with this because I... Uh, I just prefer it at this point. And again, it doesn't really matter that I switch. It doesn't really matter. It's just an IDE at the end of the day that runs C++, okay? So don't don't get uh, like overwhelmed or something like that if you see that I've switched or whatever. So yeah, let's print out our home address. So we'll do C out. And so the first thing we want to print out is the street address. So how do we access it? We'll use the dot operator. So home is our variable. So home dot street address. And so that's going to return a string which is going to be this, the street address, right? So it's going to return that, and then we're going to print it out into the C out stream, okay? So then we're going to do the same for all of the rest of the values. So we'll do home.city, and then C out home.state, and line C out home.zip code, and line. And there you go. So we have all these values here, which represent our address, which is home. So let's try printing them out now, okay? And I know this is all kind of small, except for my, uh, except for the code editor. Everything else is pretty small. So I'll see you next episode if I can get the zoom working again. Anyway, so we have our home address here. <clears throat> it says 600 CO Road 252, Gustine, Texas 76455. So it works perfectly as we expected. So basically, with that knowledge, you now know that you're able to create address variables, um, set the values of those variables by accessing them with the dot operator, and then you can even print them out if you want to by accessing them again. All right, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's the basics of how you create structures and how you can set them and access them and stuff like that. So let's get some more practice here. So there's actually another way you can, um, well, let me show you this first. This is something you don't want to do, okay? So you don't want to do C out and then just pass in home just like that. That is not anything, right? Home just represents an address. If you want to print it out, you need to access the specific member of the address, right? Because if you print out address by itself, it's not going to know what to print, right? So you need to access a specific member of address, which, is, uh, which again, a member is a variable that lives inside of address, okay? One of the values, all right? Anyway, so let's get some more practice. Let's make another structure here. So um, let's say this time we want to represent a car in our program. So we'll do structure car. And then now let's think about what properties does a car have? So this is pretty basic. So string make, so this will be like the, uh, the what's it called? The person, the company that makes the car like Ford or Chevrolet or, or whatever, the, the make of the car. Then string model, which is the, the name of the car. And then integer year, so the year that the car is. And then double the cost of the car, okay? So those are some simple properties or members that we can use to represent what a car is. So we've basically just created a custom data type called car, all right? So now that we have created a car, let's try using, um, let's try making some cars, right? So let's say that we want to have a couple of cars here. So um, we can create a car, car one, if you want to, and then we can do um, a car, car two. And if you want to, you can do this just like you would do with regular variables. You can actually just do it on one line. So car one, comma, car two will create two car variables. So that's kind of cool. That's a shorthand way of doing that. Anyway, so let's now give our car some um, initial values, right? So car one dot make, let's set it to Tesla. And then we'll do car one dot model. We'll do the model Y, which is the new model. And then we'll do car one dot uh, year. I don't know what the year, so we'll just say 2020. It's either 2020 or 2019, whatever. And then we'll do cost is equal to $60,000. And then uh, let's define our car two that we have here, right? Um, so we'll do car two dot make is equal to Ford. Car two dot model is equal to 
F150 card 2 dot uh, year is equal to 2020 also and then card 2 dot cost is equal to uh, 200, uh, 28,745 okay so now what we have done here is created two cars and then given them initial values pretty cool right and by the way if you're curious what happens whenever you create a car and look like what's, what happens in between here right so right here we have created a car but in between this and this the car one here is not going to have any initial values right or so you would think so what happens um, behind the scenes right so whenever you create a, uh, a variable of one of our structures that we have created here what is going to happen is as you create it these values here, these primitive data types like the zip code is going to be filled with garbage value. So whatever happens to be at that memory address, I guess, is going to be filled inside of there, okay? And I, I can actually demonstrate that to you. I can prove that to you, okay, if you don't believe me. So what we can do here is put a break, a line break, and I'll teach you, I'll make a separate video on debugging in the future, like real soon, because uh, it's going to be very useful. So what this is going to do is basically stop the program in time at this at this line of code, okay? So we can see in real time what is happening to this variable here. So that's going to be pretty cool. Let's actually someone here also. Wait, no, not, not here. Let's do... All right, so that should be good. So let's try running this now to see if it works. So we'll start debugging. And what it should do is basically start here at the first line, line 24. Because so it it's going to start at the entry point of the program, which happens to be the main uh, function. So it's going to start here. Then it's going to stop at this line because we put a, a break point. And then we're going to see what's going to be able to happen. So down here is going to be a list of all the different variables and objects or whatever is, that is uh, being created. And we can see how their values change over time. Okay. So currently the program is at this point. So we can skip to the next point if we want to by clicking the step over button. So step over created. And so now we're on this line here. Okay. Um, but we haven't run this line yet. Okay. We were on this line, but we haven't run it yet. So we need to step over it to run it. But first let's look at it. So we've created two cars. All right. And um, and by the way, the reason that the cars are created, even though we haven't run this line yet, like I said, is because um, we're not using dynamic allocation. So the program has already scanned this ahead of time. The compiler has scanned this ahead of time, and it knows to create these variables when the program begins, basically, okay? In case you're curious, all right? So let's look at this. So we have car one and car two. If we open this up here, we can see the different members of car one and car two, which is pretty cool. And, and we can even see their values here. So um, so keep in mind we have not run these yet so just keep that in mind but they do exist technically okay so make it says error reading characters of string and then year we have a dummy value and then cost we have a dummy value okay so let's see what happens when we run this line of code here okay so we'll step over this boom and so now we're on this line here but it's actually uh, yeah it's on this line here and let's see what happened when we created these two cars here so after we create these two cars it set the make to an empty string and set the model to an empty string, but year and cost still have dummy values, which are just random values that happen to be at that memory location. So in case you're wondering why strings are by default just empty strings, it's because strings are objects, which are basically structures, but we'll learn about objects later on. So strings are objects, so by default, um, the C++ language just makes them empty strings whenever they're created and they don't have um, initial values, okay? But for the primitive types like integer and double that we have here, as you can see, they're set to just dummy values, which again are just values that happen to be there at that location, right? So right now we're at this line of code here, uh, or we haven't run this line of code here, but we're at this line of code. So let's try running this now to see what happens. So step over, and now it has set the car1.make equal to Tesla. So if we look closely here, car one dot, uh, car one make is equal to Tesla, as you can see, right? We have set the value to Tesla. Okay, I've started on my zoom in program for you because I feel sorry for you if you can't see this because it's very small. So currently you can see that car1.make, as we just ran this line of code here, it has set car1.make equal to Tesla. So you can see in real time that the value is being changed from an empty string to a Tesla. So that, that, so that proves that we know in between us creating the car and setting the initial values of the car, um, the initial values of the, the the initial values of the members of the car are going to be set to empty strings for the strings and then dummy values for the integers and the doubles. So let's run the, through this some more to see how the values change over time. Okay, so I'll press F10 to step over again, and we can see that model Y was just set, and then now let's set these two values here. So F10, F10, and now if we zoom in here we can see that we have these values. So 2020 for year and 60,000 for cost, which is pretty cool, right? We can see how they change in real time from the garbage values from uh, to the, the, the values that we set, right? On these two lines right here. So yeah, that was just a brief overview of what happens whenever you um, 
don't initialize the values. Hopefully you understand that a little better now. Like I said, I'll be doing an in-depth video on debugging in the future, but that's something useful to know in case you're interested. All right, so let's see here. So let's, um, this is actually pretty much it for the structure episode where you learn how to define what structures are. We have the address structure and we have the car structure, and then we learn how to access the member values of each of these structures here and give them initial values, okay? But that's a, there's actually one more thing I wanna show you. There's an easier way to set these two, um, initialize these two things, these two cars right here, right? So let's say we want to initialize this one in a better way, car one, right? So we could actually do that. So car one, we can do is equal to, and then open up curly brackets. And inside these curly brackets, we can give them the initial value, so Tesla. And you can see that the IDE autom ad automatically recognizes that you're trying to set the members of this car here. So it says dot make, which is pretty cool. So control P to see, oh, it doesn't show. So now we'll set the model, so model Y. Now we'll set the year, so 2020, and then we'll set the cost, so 60,000. There we go. So that's the same thing as this here, except that we're doing it in a shorthand way, so it's much easier to work with, actually. Much easier to type, rather. Um, yeah, it says declaration and assignment can be joined. So what that means is that we can just literally put this all in one line here. So car one, is equal to, there we go. So basically it's technically like giving an initialization list, but uh, yeah, you don't have to, right? And let's do the same thing for car two now. So car, car two is equal to, and so let's say Ford F150 and 2020 and 28745. And there we go. So now we've created car two, which is a car and given, them, given it those initial values, which is pretty cool. So that means that as this car is created, it's going to be assigned these values pretty much immediately. So there's no in between, you know, between, you know, creating the car and setting the values of the car pretty much. Okay. So yeah, hopefully that uh, gives you some insight on how to create structures and how to set them and how to access them in different ways. Stay tuned for next episode where we look at how to use arrays that can hold structures. Okay. Also make sure to check the description below for the code for this episode. I have um, a written out code example here so you can see how I did this. You can come back to it later on if you want to and see all the comments above the code in case you didn't understand something or forgot how to do it. So make sure you check this out in the description below. Bookmark it for future use and then uh, you can come back to it if you need to. Also we have a Discord server with about 1100 members. You can join this, get some friends, get some help in these help channels here if you want to. There will be a link for this in the description below. And the final thing I want to tell you is that we have a way for you to support this channel if you want to. You can support it for as low as 99 cents. You can just click the join button next to the subscribe button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for 90 cent, as low as 99 cents a month, okay? So if you join it, you can get some cool perks like a custom uh, Discord rank here and a bunch of other cool things. So check that out if you want to. Um, and yeah, so if you like this video, leave a like if you need to see more, subscribe, and peace.